What's up, sweaties? It's episode 151 of Collider Heroes. I'm John Schnepp. I'm back from the hot, sweaty world of Palm Springs. I was over there in the weekend. 118. I don't know how you guys survive. I was sweating bullets. My hey eyes guys, were sweating. You like this video, it hurt so bad. Anyway, I had a lot of fun at that convention. Also Let's get into the biz, the news. Let's talk about it. Joining me today is Emma Fife. Hey, what is up? I'm glad that you didn't melt in Palm Springs. It's uh. It's a real, it's a real concern of yeah. life. No, I didn't really think about it too much until I was outside, like packing equipment and stuff. I was like, it's insane out here. <laughs> yeah. How do these people do it? Yeah. You know, Amy, what do you think? Amy's here. Uh, superpower, something in the water. Uh, how do they do it? I don't know. Uh, hello, good to be back. Now I'm, I'm just busy evolving theories about whether you actually came back or whether you did melt and a doppelganger. Is I here. was pod replaced. The water in uh, Palm Springs is filled with weird kind of disgusting floaty uh, stuff. I didn't drink any of it. I was buying bottled water. I was like, they finally got me to buy bottled water against my own wishes. I just normally just buy it if I'm out, but this was like for survival purposes. <laughs> so let's talk about some stuff. It is Jack Kirby's 100th birthday today. That is right. What? The King Kirby turns officially 100. Dang. He's passed away in the 80s. But like, you know what? Jack Kirby is the king of comics. Over on the right-hand side there, you can see just a few of the incredible characters that he created and gave us alongside Stan Lee on some of them. Sometimes just Kirby alone with the power cosmic, which he himself wields in that picture on the left, which is done by the, the master Alex Ross. Um, Let's just all just, you know, this day, today, celebrate Jack Kirby. If you can, go out to a comic book store and buy a Kirby comic. Go online, get a digital Kirby comic. Get into the future by reading comics digitally. Embrace all that is Kirby. That's what I'd love to say. Would you ladies like to say a word or two about Kirby? Amy? Enough said. Yeah, Enough said. I, I love the graphic with the all the comics next to him, and that just barely scratches the yes. surface yeah. of Jack Kirby's body of work. Well, so. I made that. I personally made that graphic yeah. four years ago as a birthday, like Aww. happy birthday, Jack, like '96 or whatever. And I found that it was like Facebook like reminds you about posts from a, you know four years ago today. You did you this. Loved was like Jack Kirby then. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Four years ago. <laughs> yep, still happening. Hundredth birthday. So fantastic news. You know he's gonna live on forever. Um, let's get right into uh, the news that we're going to talk about. Joker and Batman, how many versions of them are we going to have in movies? That's kind of the news today. It's like, how many different versions is enough? You know, I mean, let's get right into Matt Reeves. He had a comment that he said Batman is going to be a standalone film, and then he retracted that by saying Batman is in the DC universe. Um, but I ask which one? So I, I don't really understand kind of what's going on. The Batman's gonna be a standalone film. Is there gonna be, uh, Ben is gonna be, is he gonna be Batman in this? Even if it's in the DC universe, is it gonna take place in the 80s? I mean, how many how many different Batmans can there be? In the, in the TV, in comic books, we have different writers and different artists mm -hmm. all the time. So we as comic book readers are used to these kind of changeovers. So Batman looks different depending on what artist is drawing Batman. You have the version of John Romita Jr. draws, you have the version Greg Capullo draws. You have all these different versions of Batman, which as a comic book fan, you're like, well, I like this version better, or I like this version better, or you're just kind of used to seeing Batman done differently as, as the Joker, like Jim Lee does a really pointy chin Joker with a pointy nose. It's like everyone has a different way that they draw these characters. What are your feelings about the different Batmans that I think we're probably going to end up having? Let's start with you, Emma. It's so interesting because I feel that this is something that DC is already doing across the board with their properties in terms of their translation to being on screen. For example, you have the Flash TV show mm -hmm. and you're going to have the Flash and Justice League and they're not played by the same actor. Right. And that is, as you say, Schnepp, very in line with what goes on in the comic book world that you have all of these different stories sort of happening concurrently that are in different universes, mm -hmm. so to speak. Right. So, but because of the way other companies do things right. in terms of having everything be consistent between films and TV shows, et cetera, I think that it's maybe a little jarring as a movie going audience to go and be like, but but isn't Ben Affleck Batman? Why is this other guy Batman? Or, or isn't Jared Leto the Joker? Who's this other dude playing the right. Joker? You know, so I don't know. I, I don't necessarily hate the idea, but I do think that it is potentially a little confusing. Amy? Well, it's weird because uh, 
you know, in, in comics, obviously, there, there are a million what, like, DC calls them Elseworlds. Yes. Uh, sort of officially branded, like, alternate versions of things. And then you have stories where it's like, this is all ostensibly happening at the same time to the same version of Batman, and we just accept any sort of irregularities of, like, but he was at a dinner when that went down. <laughs> right. You know, you just try not to get that specific with it so you don't lose your mind. But they do try to establish, like, at any given time, there's usually, like, a real Batman that's having adventures that yes. sort of count. And even if multiple people are dying and designing him they like but we're used to living with that complexity in comics and we're used to living with it between mediums like right. no one's confused sure. that their Arkham Asylum video game Batman isn't the same as their animated series Batman we're used to it between mediums but we're not used to it in film at the same time and that's honestly strange it's right. a strange way to invest your resources it is unless they make it very clear that these other Batman Joker stories as you say Amy don't count yeah, if it's or, Gotham by Gaslight live action, like, sure. we're going to be clear that totally. that's not Ben Affleck. Well, they've got an animated version of Gotham by Gaslight. Hey, Adam, let's go to that picture from Gotham, the TV series, of young Bruce Wayne <laughs> actually wearing a early version of the bat cowl. He doesn't so have the ears cute. yet. Oh, He's got kind of a, you know, like some protective wear that's going on. And when I saw this, and there's a little clip that you could watch the preview for Gotham season four, I was like, you know what, finally, I mean, that was my big complaint about Gotham when it first started. I was like, baby Bruce Wayne. I was like, what the hell is going on with the Penguin and all these other villains being in a Batman series without Batman? I'm warming up to it. I started watching a couple of uh, the episodes from season three, and I actually liked the Jerome slash Joker prototype, whatever. Now, maybe he is going to be the Joker. <laughs> maybe um, he's Scorsese's Joker. Yeah. Twist! Who knows <laughs> what's going on? But you know what? I actually kind of like it, and I feel like that having these different Batmans, just like we ha we're going to have these different flashes, I'm totally cool with it. I don't, mi I don't mind having multiple Jokers. In fact, I know Ben Affleck has one more Batman to do in his contract, and whether that's the Batman or whether it's Justice League 2, or whether it's Flashpoint, he's going to fulfill that role as ben Bruce Wayne and Ben Affleck, uh, Bruce Wayne and Batman. <laughs> Um, I know it gets confusing. So, like, but there's going to be other Batmans, and I think that um, Matt Reeves saying it's going to be Batman in the DC universe, but it's probably going to take place. My guess is in the 80s. The same with the Joker movie. So, if right. those Elseworlds, I yeah, think so. Because I think some of that might be justifying the fact that there are multiple actors playing right. these parts you can go well this is a younger version of them yes kind of thing Here's so the weird thing. if they're really doing that like it's possible to get like if they're really putting both of those in the 80s and connecting them why not tell us so we can get excited right. rather than being disappointed by what they're not doing because yeah. it's a it's a valid mm. angle to go right. like we're doing a pair of prequels that you you know this is an approach you haven't seen before they're each going to begin separately or they whatever. should they should like, just commit and stand by it i find warner warner brothers dc uh the film division at least is a little more fear-based at least in the way they've been very trepidatious about announcing anything and they've always announced films and then taken them back. Announce films, taken them back. Announce more new films and not do those. Announce even more new films and still not do those. And now we're in the phase of we've got like three or four different Joker and Batman movies that have been announced, yet none of them are actually in production yet. So I wish that they would just either like commit to one of them or the other. And because I feel, like I said, it's all fear-based. They don't want to upset whoever they think is going to go see Justice League. Guess what? We're all going to go see Justice League. <laughs> all of us are going. Yeah. So, I mean, I feel yeah. like, look, you know, get on it. Just it's like, let's move on to the next subject. Joker <laughs> and Harley in Mad Love. That's another uh, one. So we've got the, that's taking Gotham City Sirens place right now. Uh, Mark maybe? Hughes, yeah, Mark Hughes over at Forbes has confirmed Gotham series is not canceled. It's just going to be done later. And they're developing uh, the, it, basically they're going to call it Mad Love based off of the, you know, graphic novel with Bruce Tim and all that stuff. So it's, so it's sort of like, I kind Bellini. of think based off the animated series, it's kind of a, yeah. a cool way to go. If they're going to go with Joker and Harley Quinn, I love the version of Mad Love. That's one of my favorite stories with both of them in it. So seeing that done, I know this isn't the Scorsese Joker version. My mind is already hurting thinking about all these different ones, but I'm cool with it if I start to think about it more like comic books where it's different writers and artists, i.e. different writers and directors trying different versions of the Batman and Joker. Amy, what do you think about the Mad Love Joker and Harley? Well, it's coming at a weird time of uncertainty with all these other films. Uh, like, there... There is, like, a, a certain logic. I was reading that same Forbes rundown, and he was sort of like, well, if you put the, the like, a Harley Joker film first, and then you do the Gotham City Sirens, like, 
it does make there's some story sense there. Right. Um, I'm gonna be sort of like probably gritting my teeth through the like, all right, gotta gotta put the big like I love Mad Love, but it's a story that I've known and am like I don't necessarily need to see it again. Uh, I'm more interested in the stuff that Harley does, like, with the rest of her life, mm -hmm. uh, which is, of course, what we're supposed to get in Gotham City Sirens. Right. Uh, but, but they have proven, like, people flip out over this uh, and will probably show up for it. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know. I can see a certain logic there. I'm not wildly excited for 100 Joker movies. Right. <laughs> um, but, like, that might just be the, the weird timing of it. I don't know. Yeah, what do you think? I think I'm in agreement with you, Amy, from the point of view that this is a great story. And of, and of course, Harley originated in the animated series. Mm -hmm. And for all that I did not care for Suicide Squad and I did not care for any of the things they did with Harley Quinn as a character, mm -hmm. I did enjoy Margot Robbie yeah. as Harley Quinn. Right. So I want to see her get the chance to do more and totally agree. I'm way more interested in the stuff that she does with the rest of her life, like in the Amanda Connor, Harley Quinn comics, so interesting. She's like done with the Joker and goes back to practicing mm -hmm. uh, psychology. And it, it's really interesting and fun. And the other Batman characters kind of get sprinkled in here and there. But anyway, Mad Love, again, it it is an interesting story. And I think it'll also potentially give Jared Leto a chance to redeem himself to, as the To actually Joker? be in it for more than three right, seconds. Maybe, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But again, because we are in this oversaturation of Joker right now, I feel more like, can we just get Gotham City Sirens? I just, that's what I want to <laughs> well, see. I think we're going to have to wait a couple years, but we don't have to wait for more Joker because <laughs> Todd Phillips and Martin Scorsese are doing their own version of the Joker set in the 80s. Uh, it's an 80s origin story. Um, what are they going to do? Are they going to do Killing Joke or The Man Who Laughs? What version of the Joker are we going to see? And do we need an origin story of the Joker? I feel like The Dark Knight, uh, you know, Christopher Nolan's Batman yeah. film with Heath Ledger as the Joker, that's all I needed was the multiple versions of the different origins of him telling his would-be victim he's about to give a smiley to, you know, oh, I got these scars. I mean, that is the most fantastic and creepy yeah. version of the Joker I can imagine, you, let alone seeing, I saw the animated version of The Killing Joke. Just forget about the first 40 minutes. The last 40 minutes is actually The Killing Joke. The, the, if you saw the animated version, they added this wasted storyline that's horrible to Alan Moore's original storyline because they had to pad it out or whatever really bad mistake yeah. but the other 40 minutes of it is pretty good <laughs> um look we've already seen that if they just straight up adapted the killing joke i would be into that i wouldn't mind seeing that i don't like when they change something that already works in the comics and pad stuff origin. Up. no yeah. you know, it's, it's not an origin that's but it's a straight that's a batman movie yes yeah. i i agree with you but i feel like there is the standalone joker movie without the batman is also once again like like how gotham kind of riddled me a little <laughs> like ah. I just, I'm not into it. What do you think about the Scorsese Phillips Joker film? Interestingly, Killing Joke is also one of those stories that is a classic, but I am not eager to see adapted. Uh, like, partly because, hey, Brian Boland already did the thing. Mm -hmm. Like, read that version. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and partly because, as sort of over time, its consequences, like, it's not. Barbara Gordon does not get a good deal out of that story. Uh, and many wonderful things afterwards kind of redeemed the consequences of it, but not for virtues of the story itself. Uh, anyway, that's that would be one of my, like, I, I, I wouldn't love them going that direction for the standalone film. Uh, I don't think Joker needs an origin, but it's possible I'm going to be wrong. We right. all hated the idea of ever filling in Wolverine's backstory uh, before they finally did an Origins miniseries. There are some folks who are still mad that they took like a merry, mysterious character and gave him a specific time and place. But like, it was a pretty easy transition for me to make because I enjoyed that series. And I was like, yeah, he does come from some time and place. Yeah. But like, Wolverine's a very different character from Joker. They rely on mystery in a different way. Uh, and can you fill in those gaps with Joker and retain his, his menace? I don't know. Maybe yeah. Scorsese can. It was interesting. Uh, Nerdist did an article on the nine most notorious Joker origin stories. And one that I thought might be interesting as it, like set in the 80s is uh, uh, it is in Batman Confidential, Lovers and Mad Men, which is issues seven through 12. And basically in that, the Joker is a career criminal who gets bored because mm. he's so good at being a criminal and he starts 
committing robberies and doing things specifically to try to get Batman's attention because mm -hmm. he's obsessed with him. And that's sort of how he ends up becoming the Joker and the Batman's nemesis. And I feel like if you're going to do an 80s setting, I like the idea of a right. career criminal. You could throw in some some drug wars and stuff. I don't know. It could be kind of fun. But well, I also... But you need Batman for that Yeah, one. you, you need do. Batman. You, need, you do need Batman. Yeah, I mean, maybe this is the Batman movie that uh, Ben Affleck could be in is the Scorsese. I yeah. mean, it's like if we want to combine weird stuff, it's like it feels like why not have the Batman in this and use like the Marshall Rogers Joker fish story. Yeah. You know I mean, I think there's so many amazing Joker stories to be told so that, you know, we're just going to have to wait and see as we find out more information about this Joker standalone movie. How many different movie versions can the public handle? So that's kind <laughs> of like what our, we're talking about. We got okay. a lot of Batmans. We got a lot of Jokers. Uh, those are just a few of them, and those are just ba Ben Affleck and Jared Leto. So those are like looks that they possibly could have. I mean, are we confusing the public with the multiple universes? I mean, do you think it's going to be confusing, or can can the general public kind of latch on to like at least the way we're starting to come around to it? Like, look, there can be a Flash on TV and a Flash in the movies. There can be a Ben Affleck Batman and another version of the Batman. There can be like three different Jokers that are all happening one after the other. Can that be, can people accept that? I feel like people are capable of understanding a lot. Whether you can convince them to care enough to bother distinguishing is going to be an interesting uh, question. Um, but it, I guess in that sense, it only hurts you if the movies end up working against each other. If you have someone who like saw, so like of the people who saw Suicide Squad, will more of them turn up for any future Joker thing or stay home for any future Joker thing? And will it help or hurt if it's the same Joker? Right. There are gonna be people who got introduced to those characters who were like, oh, a Joker movie, I liked that, I had a good time at that movie. <laughs> like, there will be some of them showing up, but that's gonna be balanced against the other people who are like, didn't I just watch this? And, yeah. and, and, like, and I don't know how to make those numbers because the, there's, there's such a wide gap between us who are tracking every piece of this news and the people who are j still right. working on which universe Captain America is in. They, might <laughs> think that, they might think the Scorsese Joker is just going to be the Ben Affleck. Oh, so I heard Ben Affleck's uh, doing the Scorsese Joker. Like, they just might merge the And it's not unreasonable. No, if it's you don't not. spend every day crawling down this stuff, like, it's it, you can get your wires crossed pretty easily. Will that help or hurt? What do you think, Emma? I think that the way I feel about it is okay, I get it. You're doing all of these multiple versions, but I think that. that you do run the risk of running into fatigue a lot more easily if you just keep making different versions of the same character and doing different films. Right. Again, you run the risk of your audience getting confused. And also, when you have this whole catalog of other characters, yeah. why don't you dip into that instead of just doing another Batman movie? Which brings me to, what does this mean for the current DCEU? So we've got... So many different possible characters that we could have standalone movies. We definitely, we're getting Aquaman next year. We're getting, you know, Shazam. I mean, when I keep hearing about Suicide Squad 2, I'm like, that just doesn't make any sense to me. Like, it, really, it doesn't. I mean, it's like, I like the beginning of the film. I like a lot of the middle of the film. The ending doesn't really work. So it's sort of like they introduce a lot of different aspects to the DCU that maybe we want to kind of brush away now. So I feel like the best way to brush that away is to make a Man of Steel 2 to make a Wonder Woman 2, to make the Batman, to make these bigger, iconic characters have their standalone films instead of just doing a money grab, which is what Warner Brothers is doing. Oh, this one was successful. It's like, it's successful because it's the only film that you're making. It's like, if you made these <laughs> other films, like if you just follow Marvel, I mean, just literally, they're putting out three movies a year. You're putting out one. Right. So it's like, it's not and, really working. And Marvel's movies are all either about different characters, they're sequel films for the characters you already know, or they are those team-up movies like right. the Avengers films. And I think that what DC might be running into a little bit of is because they are they don't have a Netflix deal. They're, they're not making a Hulu original series or a Netflix original series where they can kind of play around well, with they, their other no, characters. No, they do have they do have that. It's DC All Access, whatever it's going to be called. They're <laughs> making a Teen Titans standalone oh, series. Yeah. They're making a Young Justice new, new but series. But we don't know whether those we don't yeah. know what, be the we, same. Right. We don't know right. what's going on with them. But what I'm saying is they are opening those doors. And I think those doors are going to continue to open. Sure. And I, I think that that is what they need to do. Because right now, if all they're doing is dipping into the same material and making different versions of it in film, then what is the DCEU? Right. You know, what what of these new movies is considered to be part of the DCEU and what's just another DC movie, what you know? Do you, what do you want to see for the DCEU in the future? 
Ah, uh, there's such a deep roster on the Justice League. There's so many people we haven't seen yet. There's so many flavors of the DC Universe we haven't seen yet. Y'all know I want my Birds of Prey. Mm -hmm. uh, like, it seems like a no-brainer. Right. Uh, get there somehow. Uh, get, like, some... If, even if you don't end up making Justice... Like, I don't know what the status of Justice League Dark is, but there's some fantastic characters tied right. up in that who could easily support movies. Uh, there, There's... Let it all build together. Uh but use some of this underappreciated stuff. I love the Joker, but I've already seen a bunch of great versions of him. Well, DC, uh, hopefully the DCEU is gonna continue to expand. We're gonna hear more announcements about other TV shows and other movies in the near future, and they settle all the Jokers and the different Batmans very soon. I'm excited to see what they have for all of us in the future. Let me uh, thank my guest, Emma. Where can we find you online? You can find me all over the internet at my name, Emma Fife, E-M-M-A-F-Y-F-F-E. Awesome. And Amy, where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at EnthusiAmy. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram just at John Schnepp. You've been watching episode 151 of Heroes. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hey, guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.